Heavenly Father, we know that all things are possible. It was possible that Mary could conceive and bring forth a child without male intervention. Child of God, Lord, the seed of the woman. It was also possible, Lord, that Peter could receive a revelation, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. These things, Lord, bypassed human mind and human instrumentality, and they were just revelations, Lord, that you gave. And they knew it, Father, and we pray the same will be with us today. Give us the revelation of yourself and the knowledge of yourself, O God, by the wisdom, spirit of wisdom, the knowledge of truth, Lord, we pray in this hour. And we'll be happy to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, last Wednesday, uh, we were definitely attempting to uh, inculcate the principle of Alpha and Omega in order to understand more of the beginning. That's like I mentioned some time ago that when you have a question, in, especially in school, and uh, you don't know how to figure it out, but you do know how to work from the answer back to the problem, then you work from the answer back to the problem, and then you work from the problem back to the answer. And uh, it works. Now, that's the principle of Alpha and Omega, and Hebrews 13 and 8, that whatever was God was in the beginning, he's at the end. And if the beginning is very, very sketchy, <clears throat> it's too veiled in mystery because it's too far back, and you should have by the grace of Almighty God somebody who is able to present Omega then you would actually know what Alpha was. And this is where we are in this hour, though people do not want to recognize a vindicated prophet, we have the perfect revelation of the word for this hour. And whether we can uh, assimilate it as we would like to is another question. But that might not be so necessary as long as we know where we stand according to the scripture. Now we know that Brother Branham was thoroughly a vindicated prophet. So now he's, he's way down here, in this area here, which has to do with Ephesians 1, beginning about verse 17, Paul praying the spirit of, of wisdom and knowledge and the revelation to him would come into the church that they might know the things which at the end time would, would consummate in a resurrection and a rapture. And of course, uh, all events from that time on, right up to the uh, great white throne, passed it into the new Jerusalem. <clears throat> so here we have Ephesians 1, 17, 18, right in that area. Well, it's actually to 23. And of course, this is the uh, first step of the rapture, which is the descent. The descent, which is the presence. Okay, we got that much then. Now, <clears throat> from that time on, uh, we'll read over here in, in, in Rome, I beg your pardon, 1 Corinthians 15, and, and I think by now you can actually know where I'm going to go each time. A brother was sitting in the church one day, and he said, my <laughs> I knew ahead of time, Brother Veil, what you were going to say and what scripture. And I thought the man, he really overstated himself because you've sat in my ministry for all these years and you don't know where I'm going all the time. And uh, he overstated himself. So I don't feel too bad if you don't know where I'm going exactly, but you do know I'm going to 1 Corinthians 15. And that tells you here concerning the resurrection, because the whole chapter deals on the resurrection of those who come back into immortality, having gone to dust and ashes, as Brother Branham said, into gases, and those that are standing here to be changed by access to the tree of life and be granted immortality, because the time has run out. God has a schedule. All right. For now is, Christ, now is Christ risen the dead, verse 20, become the first fruits of them that slept. Now when he does that, this is a begotten. 
This is the first begotten from the dead and is one of the begottens of God. Remember, remember, God begat in the beginning. Remember that, the very beginning, that's the very beginning God begat in order to himself be, come into the form of a son, to, to, to bring in his, the principle of sonship. Then he was begotten in the, in the form of a son through the creation of the sperm and the egg. That's a begetting. And that's the, he's, he's the only begotten son because nobody else had, bege had be beginnings like this. Then he was begotten from the dead. At least we have three. God, God does everything in three. We've got the three begettings. Okay, here is a begetting here, right here. The first fruit. And remember, we come in all the same way. Brother Branham said we do. We come all the same way. The same, the same are ours as his. Now he said, he, now that's what he said, right? So we got to believe it, and we do believe it because we see it here. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now that's absolutely the truth. Everyone that died in Adam is made alive because of Christ, and it tells you why. It tells you the first man is the earth earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul, became a living soul. The last, Adam, became a quickening spirit. Notice the progression, becoming. And when you become, it signifies that you already were and you're in a metamorphosis. Right? You already were. I see most everybody does not understand you already were. See, you already were a son. By virtue of the fact of you were. You don't have to question the thing because this is the fact. Okay, and then it says here, how be it that which is not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Afterward, that which is spiritual. And it tells you right there. It says you never had a spirit body to begin with. You had a natural body. Jesus had a spirit body being the man from heaven. We did not. First of all, we had natural. Then you go to the spirit. Then you bring the spirit body back. Pick up your local body, which is in dust and ashes. And if you and I are here, it meets us in the air, and we go on with the glorified body. Just like Jesus. Now show me a difference. See, Brother Branham said it. Now you see how the scripture, scripture all, scripture's perfect. Prophet of God's perfect. No problem. Okay, we're reading back then. It says here in the 23rd verse. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, <clears throat> afterward they that are Christ in his presence. Now you can use that word presence in the descent like we have here, and you can use it actually at the very presence of God when you're in the presence of Jesus Christ, when, when, this, when, when, he, when he becomes incarnated by the Spirit of God that's in the midst of us. Because the word is progressive. Everything in God is progressive. And look at if it didn't start way back up here, it couldn't be down here. And if you see it down here, it's got to be up there. Right? Okay, we understand that. Now, then the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, <clears throat> for he must reign and put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that, that is destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted. He's, there is an exception to the rule of everything going under his feet, which did put all things under him. In other words, God is doing this putting all things under the feet, literally, of Jesus, and God himself never comes under the feet of Jesus. Headship of Christ is God, and headship of us is Christ. Headship of woman is man, and from there on there isn't any. You go back to total obedience, to the original headship. If we ever get this lined up, we have a tremendous, tremendous church. Before the bride gets away from here, I believe we're going to find every man and woman in his and her place. And you won't find women out of their place, you won't find men out of their place. At present, it's pretty icky. I mean, that's about the best I can say to be nice up here without, you know, my usual abrupt manner of describing things, which many times are not very nice. And then it says here, when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all and in all. Now notice what it says here. Then, verse 24, come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. Now notice what it says. 
If he's delivering the kingdom up to God, even the Father, it is the Son doing it. And it says over here, the Son is subject. But notice in verse 28, it does not call him Father. <clears throat> it goes back to the essential and intrinsic, where God was everything to be that was within him, then he began manifesting it and doing something about it. See? But now you go back to the place where it's all been done. So here, let's begin to, to work our little, our nice little picture down here. All right, down here we have the New Jerusalem, which is the bride city. <clears throat> okay. These are all made up of the elect the very elect, which are the bride, the sons of Almighty God, all in through here. Every, now there's millions of them, without a doubt. Okay, <clears throat> on the throne, here is the lamb. Now you'll notice I'm gonna make him solid green because this is the son of God, as nobody else ever was a son of God or will be a son of God. <clears throat> now at this particular time, the pillar of fire. That is verse 28. Now that lets you know that we are now back to, well, got a little bit more out here. Uh, this is the wall out here, the wall here and all outside of here are all these other children of God. Now they're, they're the same because the foolish virgin and wise virgin are all the same. It's just that they, one was in the election in one area and one was in the election in the other area and they all had a natural election. <clears throat> so we have our picture here. Now the question comes up, how many gods do you see? Well, if you're colorblind or there's something wrong with you, you may see more than one, but I can only see one. I don't see two gods. I don't see the foolish trinity of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, because there ain't no such a thing. <clears throat> there is one God who is eternal spirit, who never had a beginning and who never has an end, and can only be known by revelation in the manner in which he wants to reveal himself. Now evidently at this particular time, God has done all he wants to do with the children and all that was within him. So, you're looking at a picture here of God completed in threes. Here appears God, Holy Spirit. Down here now is God, the life of God in the Son, containing all the attributes of God, that part of God which God wanted to manifest of which the scripture said the only begotten son at this point is in the bosom of his father. You can do what you want with it. It's an absolute statement. And where did he come from? He came from the bosom again. You say, what's a bosom? It's up here, but it also means a stream or a river. <clears throat> so therefore, in this great river, this great fountain of God, there poured forth not God the son, but the son of God. And here's where the Trinitarians lose all their hold and understanding. And they can't understand us. And they say, poor Brother Branham, the trouble was he wasn't taught by a proper theologian. Who? The Pope? Or the Assemblies of God? Or some mealy mouth Baptist that'll end up in adultery, as most of them seem to do? Spiritual, a lot of them physical. Nah. <clears throat> no, not the assemblies of God. Let's face it, I was around them too many years. Not the Baptists, I've hung around them too. Not the Presbyterians, I was born into them. No. There is no theology whatsoever to back them up. They are guessing. Here is what we have at the end time by vindicated proof. You say, well, I don't believe the prophet was vindicated. Fine and dandy, be my guest. Supposing he was, you're lost. I'd hate to lose any of you, but you're gone. Because this is a very serious thing, if that is a vindication. 
If thus saith the Lord is a serious vindication and everybody is gone that doesn't receive it. You say, what if they didn't know about it? God always makes sure his elect always knows. Abraham knew. Isaac knew. Jacob knew. Every one of the children of God always know. It just shows where you are. And the Bible said, make your calling and election sure. <clears throat> this thing was not done in a corner. I stood there and Brother Branham said, bring me 24 of your worst cases. I guarantee healing for all. And the Pentecostals turned it down flat as a fritter. They wanted everybody to have a chance. Let me tell you this. In this world, things do not operate by chance. They operate by God. You see here then God manifested with his sons and with his entire kingdom. Now the point is this. Where did this come from? It came from here. Where did these come from? They came in here. Where did these come from? They came in from there. Because that's where sons come from. The word born means to issue forth from. To beget means to cause to conceive. And God caused to conceive this one when? Well, let's find out. It's very simple. When he was way back here, all by himself. <clears throat> when there wasn't anybody there. At no time. Now let's understand this that the sum of the parts are never greater than the whole. Now Jesus Christ could not be the whole because he is a part, because a son is a part of life. And Jesus said when he was on earth speaking, not as the human being, but as in the very original, as the first begotten of God and the only one, he said, restore to me the glory that I had with you in the beginning. And he also said, glorify me with thine own self. <clears throat> now, before there was a speck of stardust, this was all up here alone. And whether you want to believe it or not, it still is the absolute truth that in here was the wise And in there <clears throat> was the foolish, all in there. And in there, absolutely, in God's own understanding and God's own perfect desire, he had in the bosom, no doubt about it. No doubt why, because that's the way it is right here. Now, the minute you try to change this, you are going to change God in his ways, and the Bible said there's no way you can do it. Now, where do you get three gods? If you want to go to the form God, then you get the God, you get a demigod, and you get lesser gods. Now, I do not prefer that. I prefer to know there is a family generically known as Holy Spirit children. And they are known as sons of God. And it is not God the Son and God the Sons. Although you could use that term if you knew what you were saying. But I would prefer not to. <clears throat> now, this son said, glorify thou me with thine own self. And everything was there and everybody was there before there was a speck of stardust. <clears throat> Now the question arises, if God is going to give distinction and form to his own, how is he going to do it? Because there's not a speck of stardust. He will intrinsically have to take what is here and allow what is in there to metamorphose or become what lies within it. Is that too hard to understand? I don't see any problem with it. <clears throat> I'll show you. I take and I plant a little, a little black seed. A little black seed? Oh, what a pretty little black seed. I cover it with earth, like so. You can't see it. I have the rain and the sun hit it. And pretty soon, I see a shoot come up here like that. I'm not an artist, but so what's the difference? And I see some leaves begin to form, 
and I see leaves begin to form around here, and the shoot comes up here, <coughs> and pretty soon <coughs> I see a bud begin to form. And I'm not going to draw the bud, I'm just going to draw the, the little calyx here. And, of course, being a very poor artist, and that doesn't bother me any, I'll draw a little bit of a flower up here, kind of a little rosebud. And, of course, I'm not an artist, but inside of that little rosebud, and I don't have a yellow crayon here, but if I had a white crayon or something, <coughs> I would then show you that, and, and I can't draw this right because I don't have the colors, I would show you got little stamens in here on the pistol. <coughs> now the point is, where are all those colors coming from? They are not coming from the soil. Because I can take a seed and plant an oak seed. And it won't come up a little, little green sprig. It'll come up like a, a brown, the bowl of the tree. It'll have all its myriad colors. And when it's time for frost, the sugar maple will turn many colors. And if you want to see a pretty sight, I'll just tell you how the pretty sight is. Fly over Boston this fall in nice weather. And you will see as though somebody planted the whole of Boston, one pure block is yellow, another pure block is gold, another pure block is light green, another pure block is red, and so on. You say, who laid it out? The city fathers didn't. Now, how come? How come? What did it? The life did it. And the life formed itself in the plan of God from what was in the seed. And don't tell me this can't do the same thing. Now, Brother Branham, Jesus Christ, in category, he said, I was with you in the beginning. And Brother Branham said, when, when you make man, he let us make man an inch, who was he talking to? He was talking to the sun. <clears throat> now, this sun had this body that this life produced. Right? Are you sure now? Well, look, and turn the air conditioning up to make it 35. They're going to go to sleep on me. You should have woken up. No, I'm not fooling. I'll not be with you forever. I don't intend to be, nor do I fool in this subject, because this is the subject that's dearest to my heart. I've looked at and looked at and looked at. One day I will know if i got to go on the other side to know. Now listen, it had it within it. <clears throat> don't tell me then that these did not have within it. And Brother Branham said, you bypassed it. Theophany, right? <clears throat> but you came right down here to this area here and you took upon yourself a body which could be tempted and could fall into sin. Then he said, but God had a little method. <clears throat> he would send the Holy Spirit down. I'm not, I can't put that in red. I'll put that in green. Get the right color. <clears throat> he sent the Holy Spirit down <clears throat> in here to give you immortality and bring the body into subjection. Because in this form here, that's intrinsically God. Now, I know that people don't want to relate humankind to that. Because humankind is desperately wicked. And they say, well, Jesus was the only perfect man. Listen, come on now. He wasn't just a man like you and I are. See? He, though casting aside this form, <clears throat> which came down here, <clears throat> to be tempted, knowing all things could not be tempted. So therefore, the secret of overcoming is knowledge. That's why the devil doesn't want you and me to know that we are literally sons of Almighty God and waiting for this glory here that Jesus said he missed. That Brother Branham saw beyond the curtain of time and he said, I'll never be the same again. And listen, his other visions meant nothing alongside of this. The third pole didn't mean it. Nothing meant what he saw beyond there because he saw the people <coughs> glorified with God. Some in a theophonic form. Now Jesus laid it aside. And when he came down here into death, he picked it up again. 
because the body lay here moldering in the grave. It didn't molder, I beg your pardon, it could have moldered if it weren't for God stopping it. <clears throat> but it wasn't going to corrupt. And then he said, after he went down to the Hades, in this body here, he came back with all the rest of them, picked up his body first, and then they all went up. Now that's the picture you're looking at. And the picture you understand. And you can understand it all from here if you just want to understand it. And you don't need any great big vision. You don't need any great big revelation. All you've got to understand is the law of God. Alpha is omega. <clears throat> and the God that was up here all by himself is now again down here all by himself except he's not. Because every son has been brought to birth and every son is glorified and every plan at this point is consummated. <clears throat> now, you may try to understand many things about this. I would suggest you forget it. I positively do. Because the more you're going to question, the more you're going to rumble, the more you're going to be dissatisfied, you're going to wonder what it's all about. Well, this is what it's all about. And you know why I know it? Because that man was vindicated. I stood there and heard him say, bring me 24 of your worst cases. I saw him time after time say, thus saith the Lord, it never failed. Do you think I would sell this for a bunch of hogwash and Pentecost, Baptist, Methodist, Trinitarian stuff? No, I'll die first, and by the grace of God, I will. And it's going to be worth it. See, Bob, here's our picture, what we're looking at. <clears throat> as simple as ABC because that's what it ends up at. Every child, everyone that was in Christ Jesus, speaking in terms of sonship, because he is the older brother. Now let's look what we find in the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> the second chapter, read it time after time. And it says here, for it be, Jesus had, to, this one took a human body by the grace of God to suffer death for you and me, tempted in all things like as you and I. Verse 10, but for it became him from for whom are all things and by whom are all things. Now who, now who is that? That's God, G-O-D. Call him Father, call him what you want. You call him by the role. <clears throat> the role would be Father. By whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. All right, now what's he talking about? He's talking about sons who have a captain. Who is this captain? He is the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. He is a son in which a way that no other sons are sons. <clears throat> no other son is Hebrews 1 and 3, who being the fortress outraying of his glory and the express image of his person, You and I, you and I aren't that. <clears throat> Only to a very minor degree. Where we're living epistles read and known of all men. If we walk in the Spirit as we live in the Spirit. We haven't got a prayer to be like the captain. Because we bypass this form here. The form that would be intrinsically spirit. But it's not. Ours isn't. Mm -mm. Adam fell. The image of God was broken. See? There's a difference. A big difference. <clears throat> now, for both he that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified. That's the, the bigger brother. These are the lesser brothers. And for this cause, Jesus, the great brother, is not ashamed to call us brethren. And God's not ashamed to call us sons. How, listen, it wouldn't do him any good if he was ashamed. You and I got kids, doesn't do us a bit of good if we're ashamed to steal our kids. Well, I'll disown them. Oh, you stupid jerk. You're crazier than, 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 well, Nicodemus wasn't crazy. He said, can a man go in his mother's womb the second time? Can you go back to your children, go back to your womb, woman? Back to regenerative organs, you men? Can the child become a sperm and an egg again? Oh, gosh. Disown. <laughs> like to chop their heads off sometimes, get rid of them. Maybe. 
<coughs> Boot them around a bit. You'll never get rid of them. What's done is done. Cannot be undone. Oh, say, say, yes, it can be. I can tie a knot into a string, a string in a knot, and then pull it out. It's undone. Uh-uh. Never the original action. Never. God himself didn't do it. He made an atonement. So let's understand the truth. Saying, I will declare my name, thy name, unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I'll put my trust in him. And behold, I and the children which God hath given me. And he's, look at, he's talking from the human viewpoint down here now with all of these. And he said, look, <clears throat> I came down even to the extent of putting my trust as a human being. And he said, so do my brothers. <clears throat> Absolutely identified. <clears throat> now, we won't worry about Logos today because I'm not going to go into that. If I wanted to talk about Logos, which I could to a degree, simply say you take the word Logos back to the original word, the root in the Greek, and you find that God got, God got his act together and begin moving. <clears throat> now, what was the act of God? To have a family. So he got his act going. And one day the act ends, and we're just about there. And we're just about there to the extent that Brother Branham said we're before the white throne right now, and Peter said, what manner of men we ought to be knowing that the day after tomorrow, bar a couple of seconds, we'll be right there at the white throne and the New Jerusalem. The dissolution of the heavens and the earth, and God recreating, <clears throat> just like he does you and me. God wastes nothing. That's why he picked up the fragments of 13 baskets. Laodicea and church ought to learn one thing about being more circumspect with retaining goods and holding goods and things. One of these days, the many things we throw, we're would to God we had them. We're not very smart, little children. We're not very smart. In fact, we're ultra stupid for all that we know. <clears throat> now, we'll leave it right there. <clears throat> Let me go back and just read what Brother Branham said when he talked about this beginning up there concerning Melchizedek. Now, God in this stage of his creation later formed into flesh Jesus. In other words, he formed himself in it. Remember, the word made, the word made is become. <clears throat> the word was made flesh is not so. The word became. Everything is a becoming. And that is the thing you've got to watch. God becoming. God becoming. Not three gods, simply God becoming. God changing his mask according to his role, which is according to his purpose. From what? From the great beginning or the begetting spirit. Then came down to be word, bringing itself out. The word doesn't yet make itself. It's just spoken out. Now, what does it mean? The word doesn't make itself word yet. It's just spoken out. In other words, it has to be spoken. Then something will begin to mature. You could say that too. It hadn't become flesh yet either. Either one. On Morpha later becomes flesh. So in other words, I look what Brother Branham said, and he said, all right, he said, the name was, he said the name was put on the Lamb's Book of Life. In other words, Jesus himself, that portion right there, <clears throat> all of Lamb life, distinctly was a segment of life itself from Almighty God. And every one of us was noted in there. Then you see the name was put on there, then the word was given, spoken out, which was designated, absolutely designated. He brings these all out, out in their time. I guess I better get the old other mic up here because I'm going to have more problems unless I get the... Uh, but we'll work on this this morning. <clears throat> now, bringing those all out uh, in their own proper order, in their own proper time, which is really a manifestation of Almighty God. That's why we're actually called his body. We're called the members of his body, which makes it very, very true. Then it says, when Abraham met him, met who? God. He was Melchizedek. He unfolds here what, now listen, he folds, unfolds here what all the attributes will do in the final end. Every son of Abraham, every son of faith, now they're the same thing, same person, will absolutely do the same thing. But I want you to watch how we have to come. Now we, we see the attributes are sons of his spirit, have not yet entered the word form body. They miss it at the offering. This body which is subject to the word and earnest. That's the Holy Ghost waiting for the earnest change. Now, the difference between him and you as a son. Now, he's not talking about God. No, he's talking about the beginning up there with Jesus. See, he was at the beginning the word, a non morpho body. He came and lived in that person of Melchizedek. The same one came on down. God himself. We never heard any more of Melchizedek because he became Jesus Christ and so on right down the line. <clears throat> now, I'm going to leave that there. And I want to go back 
uh, where we left off at page 15. And um, in page 15, uh, Brother Branham has talked to us about uh, the flesh being tempted by sin. In other words, we came into a body of flesh to be tempted by sin. And he informs us that the baptism with the Holy Ghost is then given that we might live with the body, not subject to sin, but to the Word of God. And we're reading on page 14 there, uh, page 15, I guess it is, yeah, <clears throat> and paragraph 70. And he said there that, that uh, bypassing this, this form, of the theophonic form which could appear and disappear, we came flesh, and so on. And then he said here, but look, when this body receives the Spirit of God, the immortal life inside of you, it throws this body in subjection to God. Now why did he say that? We explain that to you on the grounds as this. <clears throat> you are already a part of God. Right, we're a part of God already, each one of us. And so being a part of God, <clears throat> there, um, that part could not sin. See, couldn't do it. And then in case in the body, there's no way it could sin. So what, what actually sinned? The flesh sinned. <clears throat> By opening the door to the senses, wherein the life then took an inferior position to the superior position, which was, which was bad. We've been, in other words, bondage to sin, what the scripture says. So therefore the superior was in bondage to the inferior. We were slaves sold under sin. <clears throat> but this here itself would never sin. And in the theophonic form would not sin. So therefore God sent the Holy Ghost, which our bodies are temple, touching every single cell, looking toward immortality. That's what we're looking at. And that's why he says in here, the immortal life inside of you, the immortal life. This body then was not quickened by the life that came here and is cased in this flesh. It in itself could not do it. See, it couldn't do it. <clears throat> but the quickening by the Holy Ghost falling upon and making us temples of the Holy Ghost quickens us to the extent that everybody, and I mean the atoms in the body, that has been touched by the Holy Ghost will become immortal. And we're not talking about anointing. Now, speaking of the body being subject to God, he that's born of God doth not commit sin, he cannot sin. That's absolutely true. You wouldn't get one of those sinning. There is therefore now no condemnation in which are in Christ who walk in after Christ after spirit. See, there you are. See, your body is subject. Now we've got to believe it to the spirit. It is no more subject to the things of the world. They're dead. The world, the flesh, and the devil. <clears throat> they are dead. Your sins are buried in baptism, and you are a new creation in Christ. Your body becoming subject to the Spirit. And notice, try to live a right kind of life. <clears throat> now, the way he spoke in the first place, um, like he says here, see, that throws your body subject. You don't have to say, oh, if I could just quit drinking, if I could just so-and-so, just get in Christ, it's all gone, see, because your body is subject to the Spirit. Now that sounds as Brother Brown is saying, well, the minute you're born again, hallelujah, I'm just like I'm a theophany. Hogwash you are. He knew that and I knew it. How come he said you backslide a thousand times a day? How come he said there's no perfection this side of the resurrection? Now let's read what the book of Colossians says. And then, and then, then I'll read, now that's what he said in this last, little last sentence. And your body becoming subject to the Spirit and try to live a right kind of life. <clears throat> that's what he said. So therefore, he wasn't saying what it sounded like he was saying. Colossians, the third chapter, 3, 18 to 14. So let's read it. But now, also, now, but now ye also put off all, all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing you put off the old man with these deeds, and to put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. <clears throat> The image is a spiritual image, an image that comes from the Word. And it says now you put off the one and you accede to the other. <clears throat> In other words, it's like the old Indian told Brother Branham. He said, since I've been born again, I've got two dogs inside of me fighting. He said, well, he said, uh, what are they like? Well, he said, one's black and one's white. Well, he said, tell me, chief, which dog wins? He said, the one I feed the most. The old boy knew that more than any theologian knew it. 
So the theologians are barbarians, but I guess the Indians aren't. That's a good one. <clears throat> Should be put on the record. Strictly congressional and theological. Put on the new man. See? Where it hasn't got a thing to do with Greek or Jew, circumcision, uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, put on, beloved, put on as the, as the elect of God, holy, beloved, bowels and of, of mercies, kindness, humbleness, and so on, humility. <clears throat> so that's what you're looking at now. Continuing, Brother Brown, it says, and when you become subject to that spirit. Now, <clears throat> subject to the spirit isn't just being born again. That's the first part of it. The next part is knowing what the Word has to say about everything you're dealing with and then going the way of the Word to the very best of your ability. And that's what's going to bring us into the place we're talking about because we're written epistles, we're written epistles read and known of all men. And the question is, who's doing the writing? Or what writing are we subscribing to? Subscribing to the Word of God or something outside the Word of God? Well, we don't want anything outside the Word of God. <clears throat> now, Now, I've been up here in verse 72 on this. Like you women claiming you've got the Holy Ghost and going out here wearing shorts and things. Now, how could you do it? How could the Spirit of God in you ever let you do such a thing as that? It can't be so. Certainly it can't be. He's not a filthy spirit. He's a Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, that's a very good statement. The Bible said that Jesus Christ was tempted in all points like as you and I are yet without sin. Now, we've got this filthy play called The Temptation of Christ, which is run by a Jew and an, an apostate Italian, I suppose, Scorsese, written by a God knows what kind of a Greek. I have no respect for any of them, and the Jews will pay the price because one day America will turn on the Jew, and this is part of it. Now, let's understand. I'm not a Jew baiter, at least I hope I'm not, but neither am I a fool. No, I'm not a fool either. <clears throat> now, the temptation to Christ puts Christ on the cross hallucinating with drugs, having intercourse with Mary Magdalene, I guess it is. Now, being tempted in all points like as we are is not Jesus Christ having any attention or affection or proclivity towards sin. It is simply every male and every female has reproductive organs that cry for relief. And don't think for one minute that Jesus Christ himself did not have full reproductive organs that absolutely understood from within him what their uses were, what the use was. But he did not look for it. He did not want it. Now, this is how we're looking at men and women today. A woman who dresses wrong and dresses in such a way to, to bring any man to a position of lust does not need to be in a born-again child of God because he can look at it and pass right by it or he can turn his head because even though it is there and he knows it's there and he knows that he's born to the end of intercourse in 90% of the cases because 99% are absolutely not eunuchs. They marry or they have intercourse anyway. It doesn't mean that he says, I want that woman to have sex with her. That's exactly true. You will not shuck the fact that you're a male and a female. But you'd better learn young in life. And as you get older in life, there is no need to be tempted by the fact that it is there and she's a female and you're a male and vice versa. Because the Spirit of God does not allow it. And therefore does not allow women to have short skirts and raunchy clothes and dress in such a way as to entice men and men to go out and entice women. Don't tell me you're born again. Now that's a picture. Now you could have been that type of a person, even a homosexual. <clears throat> but Paul says such were some of you. But he said, now you're washed, now you're clean. If you're washed and now you're clean, you will not cease being a male and a female. That's why Brother Branagh said men don't kiss women and men don't even kiss each other. Now, there's, I understand there's a place where there can be a real affection, but you better keep it there. <clears throat> All right. 
He said, he's not a filthy spirit. He's a Holy Spirit. And believe me, the Holy Spirit can look upon anything and not give any perverted advice. He'll take your right away from it. Now it says, when you become subject to that spirit, of course, that's by the baptism with the Holy Ghost, it throws your whole being subject to that spirit. <clears throat> now, the Holy Spirit comes upon us and makes this temple which absolutely deals with immortality because we're mortal. Remember, the inside is immortal. The second death is for those who do not have the seed of God. <clears throat> because there's only one kind of eternal life. And you've already got it. You are being brought back to your Father. See? So all right. Now, the baptism with the Holy Ghost is to give us power over the flesh, but at the same time, it unites us back to God and makes us one. In other words, it confirms our sonship. Because it's because you are sons God gives you the Holy Ghost. And the only way you can know you've got the Holy Ghost is that you can respond to the word of God for your hour, and that falls flat in every Trinitarian and every Pentecostal, and I care less. Because that's the Bible. That's the Bible. Whether you want to believe it or not, it's right there in John 14 and every other passage of John. <clears throat> we become subject to that spirit, he said. Okay, let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. And we'll start down where? Well, we'll take a look at verse 25 and 6 and then just read on. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, ending one another, but let us be desirous of the true glory, to be like Christ. Bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, I could stop right here and preach an entire sermon on Melchizedek, of who he really is, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take it out of my mind and get back to it another time. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Let every man prove his own work. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. In other words, if you're going to bear your own burden, then do something about it. And you get there, you'll have a full reward. And God will say, this is a good servant. Come on in. Not he's going to bring in because you're a good servant. But he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou in the joy of thy Lord. As Paul said, the word of God warns us, let no man steal thy crown. <clears throat> let no man take your place. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. That's just, a, that's just a giving of material things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, that's he's going to reap. In this strange, people would, people would dearly love <clears throat> at this time to have what is? What is? Did oats double its price or something like that? Oh my, I wish my wheat would turn into oats. Well, it ain't going to happen. I don't care if it goes up ten times the price. Well, you know, it's been a good year for soybeans. I sure wish my corn had going to soybeans. I got news for you, honey. You're just crazy as a bed bug. And I'm insulting the bed bug. I'm insulting you. Because your corn will not turn into soybeans. Then how in the world are you going to reap anything but you sow? You know something? Everybody ought to start doing something. Just doing something that's in the Word of God and let God bless it. But most Christians are simply puddle-headed and think there's a sort of across-the-board life that we sort of, you know, look around like a bunch of kids looking up, you know, huh? kind of goofies, you know. That's not the Word of God. Start literally doing something. I've been asking you, coaxing you, everything but hitting you the four-by-four in certain areas. Please do something so you won't listen. And you call yourself born again Christian city there. What is the matter with you, brother, sister? You can't, you can't be that way. Come on, it's too late in the day. I'm too old to fool. I haven't got much time left. I'm telling you it works. You positively reap what you sow. <clears throat> and if you don't sow, you don't reap. Now the world wants to sow and not reap. So you got every type of birth control, abortion, everything else. That's all they do want to sow is filth. And sex is not filthy, it's only how you make it. God never made anything filthy. Don't blame God for anything. Don't even blame Adam. God doesn't fuss at us from Adam's sin. He made a way to cover everything. He fusses because you and I don't take advantage. 
<clears throat> That's the whole problem. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. What a man sows, he reaps. Now people say, hey, I sure hope I don't have to reap this. You certainly will. So be careful what you're doing. Go out there and play around the world and get burnt. Say, well, now, Lord, take away the burn. He may never take away your burn. You may die. I knew a poor woman down in Florida. Now, she was a kind of a gas bag, but, you know, I liked her to a degree. But, you know, she, uh, she married a man. She shouldn't have married him. And he was syphilitic. So she got syphilis. And her arm went like this. God spared her life. But she died that way. You be careful who you marry and what's going on. Yeah, you know what? You look at what you reap, you're going to sow. You say, well, I don't always see it that way. You wait till judgment day. You'll find you did. I'm going to find I do. Look, brother, sister, I don't kid myself at all. I kid, kid you and I don't kid me. <clears throat> when I know I'm doing the right thing, my nerves and everything are right at rest. Everything is great. When I'm in this word, I got no problem at all, having been with the Lord day by day, thinking, meditating, watching what he's saying. I've been a problem. I'm not worried here at all. I've taught you right. You've been taught right. Pull the word out. Believe for something. Never fails. What you sow, you reap. You can't change the things of God. <clears throat> now listen, for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. In other words, he's telling you, this that's given to you and me is to immortalize not just our bodies but our entire lives. Not a wasted moment, not a wasted word. Not that you can't have fun and be merry. Look, my heavens, the Old Testament under the law, looking to the blood. Look what it did. They danced and they had a great time. The psalmist, they strummed on their guitars and their harps. Or harps, I guess what they had. <clears throat> and they danced in the spirit. I'm not against dancing and singing. Just make sure it's not in the flesh. That's all. I'm not against those things. You might think I'm because I'm stiff and st I'm not so stiff and starchy as you think I'm. You know I'm not. I'm not a stiff and starchy person. I'm crazy in a hoot all the time, but <clears throat> not stiff and starchy. Look, it tells you how you can do it. Now it says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's covered in the book of, of, Hebrew, of um, Romans, the fifth chapter. <clears throat> that you look to God, you begin sowing in faith, looking in faith, and it takes patience and character is molded, and you come out a deeper, greater child of God in the love of God. Don't be weary. You're going to faint. You're going to, you're, going to, you're going to reap anyway. Now, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all people, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. <clears throat> you know, if you looked around and said, what can I do for my brother or sister? Now look, you don't do for them when they can do for themselves. Oh, no, when they can do for themselves, they want to sit around and pick their noses. You give them a you know, swift kick and you know where. You know, verbally, spiritually speaking. Then you listen, there's no place. Well, well, you know, your church here's got several thousand dollars in a benevolent fund. Well, I'll just sit down and, you know. Well, you're going to find yourself getting, what do they call, catat you'll be a catatonic before we're going to give you anything. Oh, we do get soaring relent. Don't worry. Come on. That's not the Bible. I like Brother Joe's attitude. He told me what he did with his boys, sitting around picking his nose. He said, look, get out as though you're looking for a job. Right? He finally got him a job. I'm 100% for you, son. Don't ever think I'm not. It's my kind of a man. You might think Joe's happy little boy, and he is, and nice and sweet and kind, but that, that's the spirit of God, Brother Sidney. You say, that's not the spirit of God. I challenge you. That is the spirit of God because the Bible says man will work and sweat. That's what's wrong with this world. There's no sweat anymore. Except they sweat when they get caught, like Bosky in the stock market, the arbitrator. Swindler. That's when people sweat. Wrong kind of sweat, honey. Wrong kind of sweat. Like this kind of preaching, pretty raunchy, ain't it? Ha, ha, ha. You never know what's going to come from up here, do you? <clears throat> Stick around. And Paul said, look what a large, what a great letter. And he said, big, big print. He said, you know, it's my writing. I wrote you this letter. What a man sows. So Brother Brandon said, all right, sow in the spirit. Now listen, 
73 and I'm going to quit. <clears throat> then when you become subject to that spirit, it throws your whole being subject to that spirit. Now watch. And that spirit is quickened. No, that spirit is nothing in the world but this seed word. Now he says made manifest or quickened. I want you to rub out made manifest because the little word or does not mean either or or. It simply means that he gave the wrong word. So let me read it right. And that spirit is nothing in the world but this seed word quickened, hallelujah, made alive. And when the Bible said don't do this, that body quickly turns to it. There's no question. Now, what does he mean? <clears throat> let me tell you what I've written down, what I think he means, if I can find it. Okay. Paragraph 73, and that spirit is nothing in the world but this seed word quickened made alive. Now as we read the next statement, it appears to me that if we com compare or place seed word with Brother Branham speaking of the rebirth, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and saying, you have just heard from your theophany. What's your theophany? Couldn't sin if you tried. Can't be tempted. Huh? Come on. Come on. That's all you know about it. You judge from theophany. <clears throat> we can consider that he is telling us that when the Holy Spirit baptism or token comes, it makes our bodies like unto word bodies that can't be tempted to fall because the seed that is in our bodies is the source of our original existence and is the same seed that would have had a spirit body. Huh? And so therefore with the spirit upon our bodies and our bodies under control of the spirit, we are quickened to the full, full, word, full will of God even amidst temptation and in a body that can be tempted. <clears throat> so look at, he said, hey, when you're born again, you've heard from this. I'm tired of this sickness, sin, and all this junk down here. I want to be a real servant to God. And the Holy Spirit says, yes, I want you to know that I've come to replace that. Because this is entirely spirit. Come on. Spirit bodies, entirely spirit. Now I'm down here with you. Not a theophonic form yet. But you listen to me and you will be a complete overcomer. The same word goes to the bride. When Brother Branham said the bride will have the word and know what to do with it or she'll keep her mouth shut and wait for the time. We must learn as the prophet that we can live in overcoming victory. And he said when the, when the Holy Spirit says, <clears throat> don't do this, the body turns quickly to it, there's no question. What is it? It's the earnest of the resurrection. Now watch what he's saying. This spirit of immortality to make you immortal the spirit of the resurrection means this. This body here comes down and picks up what's disintegrated and you're now perfectly perfect. <clears throat> now, Jesus Christ went through the same thing. You and I go through the same thing. He laid aside that body, came down, was tempted. The Holy Ghost came upon him. He tip, took terrible temptation testing, didn't succumb at all. A perfect human being in every way. The form indicated he was. Well, the man inside wasn't. He was different. He was the Lord from heaven. Now, what is it? It's the earnest of the resurrection. This body will be raised up again because it's already started. What has started? <clears throat> you and me being subject to the word of God by the Holy Ghost proves we're going to rise in the resurrection. Why? Because the body now subject will be subject then. Well, I say, well, just a minute, Brother Vail, there's such a thing, you know, out there in the world that you talk about those two vines and, and the false anointed. They're truly anointed, but they're false to the word of God. They perform all this. Don't you understand that's exactly true? But they're off the word. You can have every single thing this word produces. That's right. But you better watch how and where you get it. Because the sinner's going to have a resurrected body and he's going to burn in it. The sinner can be healed. He can show everything. 
The sinner can show love, absolutely show love, 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 my God, until it's coming out of his ears. And you'd think this guy's got to be born again and give him one word about that and he'll spit right in your face and cut your throat. <clears throat> Here's old Cain again. You say what you want. Say, Brother Bill, you're just a mean man. I say, thank you. I receive that as a compliment. That's right. It was one subject to sin <clears throat> and mire and corruption. But now it's got the earnest. It's turned heavenly. Right. In heavenly places. Now that's the earnest that you're going in the rapture. It's the earnest. <clears throat> now just a minute. He said it's the earnest you're going in the rapture. And that's true as an individual. But what about the fact that the token came? Now that's for the bride. Now. The token absolutely proves the headship, the Holy Ghost himself taking over the church in this last hour because it took him over <clears throat> and he becomes the first fruit. Then what about taking you and me over? What about now the proof of the true baptism? Hey, the resurrection is round the door and the rapture is right here if you want to make it. We'll quit right here. We'll start again next Wednesday, or next Saturday night. Take, I got just the right place, I think, here to go ahead and make a, uh, <clears throat> what you call a recap. Shall we just rise at this time then? And don't forget there's lunch out there. You want to have lunch with us. We're always happy to have you. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for your love, mercy, and grace. The time of fellowship we have around the word, Lord, and we're very grateful that though we don't know many things, we can know some things, Lord, and we know the things we're supposed to know. And we're glad we can see these things laid out before us, Lord, and we believe they're 100% right. We don't try to correlate them with the world. We don't try to correlate them with the theologians and anybody else, Father. We just try to correlate it with your word by the word of the prophet. And it's wonderful how it just lines up to us. Maybe not to somebody else, but Father, we cannot thank you enough. This is where our joy is. This is where our life is. This is where it all is. And we praise you for it. We praise you, Lord, for these lovely people that are here with us this morning to sit around and minister the word. Oh, God, I pray that in Jesus Christ's name there won't be one of us miss anything that's for us in this hour, Lord. But each and every one of us will come in that great day and shine, Lord, in your glory. Even as there is a lesser glory to shine in now, it's getting more and more and more in one day unto the perfection. Even as the perfect word has been given today, we know that's right at hand. Father, we thank you for it. Lord, now we know that the devil would try to take it from us, but you said you gave us the Holy Ghost so he couldn't take it from us. And we're praying now to the Holy Spirit within us. Holy Spirit within us, seal this to our minds in such a way that it cannot ever leave us, and under no temptation can it possibly go, because greater are you that's in us than anything that's by ourselves or out there in the world. We give you praise, we give you honor and glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. Amen and amen. Take the name of Jesus with you. Yeah.